What is Advent? How do we celebrate it? Well, in this video, we're going to talk about our top seven traditions that we use in our family to really dive into the season. So all that and more coming up next. Hey everyone, we're Drew and Katie Taylor with Catholic Link. We're passionate about helping you reach new heights in your faith and in your relationships. If you're new to the channel, hit subscribe and leave a comment below and let us know your favorite Advent traditions. So starting off, I really want to direct you to the description, which is going to break down which one of these traditions, and you can just skip to the part of the video that you want to learn about. Also down there, we're going to have a bunch of links. So we have compiled some of our favorite tools to live out this season. And so some of the resources, some of the books, some of the traditions just kind of outlined with some detail and some links. Mm -hmm. The first thing that we're going to talk about is what is Advent? Yeah. So before we dive into our top seven, why are we even doing this season? And I think it's first to highlight that the church in all of its wisdom has given us a liturgical calendar. And so Drew and I are passionate about liturgical living. We recently did a video with Kendra Tierney, so we'll link that above as well. But the idea that the calendar is laid out to invite us in to experience the life of Christ mm -hmm. in a new and profound way. And so we have really enjoyed diving in to the seasons. And so Advent is the 30-ish days, not quite even. Uh, leading up to Christmas. Mm. And so what this season is, is really a time to prepare our hearts to receive Christ at Christmas and at the end of time. And so those are where the readings are focused. And so when we are diving in, the color turns to purple. Mm. And so similar to Lent, this is a penitential season. So a time that we are invited in to prayer, to mm. fasting, to almsgiving. Yeah, and so that goes into our first tradition is going to be spiritually prepare yourself for Christmas. So like Katie was saying, Advent is a lot like Lent in a way where we are should be giving up things. We should be making room for Christ, just like Christ had no room in the inn, or Mary and Joseph had no room in the inn when they gave birth to Christ. We are trying to be the innkeepers that are making room so that when Christ comes, that he can have a place in our hearts. So first, Christ is knocking at your heart. So before we even dive into family traditions, we need to look at what we're praying with. Yeah. What are we praying with individually for this season? What are we praying with as a couple? And so that's really important. We'll put some of our favorite Advent devotionals down below, resources that have helped us individually and as a couple grow. Yeah. The other element with this, so we talked, that's prayer. Start with God. And then with the penance. And so I think that this is something that when we give something up, we are again making that room and it really makes Christmas special. Yeah. The my favorite Christmas that I've had was actually last Christmas when I did Exodus 90 with a, a bunch of men and we took cold showers for 90 days. And so when you get to take a hot shower on Christmas after taking cold showers for 90 days, I promise you it will be the best Christmas that you ever have. And with that, what are you going to do this Advent? Mm -hmm. What is something that you can give up to make a small no to say yes to the Lord? And then with that is almsgiving. So being able to give to the poor. Maybe you want to make blessing bags, which is just having something in your car, whether it's a granola, a bar, a pair of gloves, something that you can give to somebody who is living on the streets who's homeless that you see as you drive around that you are then prepared just like we're prepared to receive Christ we're prepared to meet him in the poor and to serve them and to love them and so there are different ways that you can really live that out in this season maybe there's an organization a nonprofit that you want to give an extra donation to mm -hmm. to really not just finish out the year well for taxes but to really finish out the year well in your spiritual giving the second tradition so as we dive now into the way that we as a family live out the season the first uh, way that we like to do that and the first thing that we really added mm. was a Jesse tree yeah so we put up our Christmas tree, our pine tree essentially, but we decorate it with just 
a simple like purple ribbon and then we start uh, hanging Jesse tree ornaments. So one of our favorite ones is by uh, Meyer Market Design. They have essentially the book, the guide that takes you through it and then these ornaments that you can hang up every day. So they've got the date and then a little picture for the kids, which is great. And then the title of the story that you find in the book, but it walks you through salvation history. The first one is the creation story and it walks you through the, the story of the Bible all the way to the birth of Christ. It's just a great way to get the kids excited and to teach them about the story of the Bible and leading them all the way to the birth of the Messiah of Christ. Yeah. Salvation history is our story. Mm -hmm. It helps put the Bible, the big story into perspective of how God is using covenants, how he's walking through with his people. Jesse is the father of David and David is the line in which Jesus comes from. And so when we dive into these stories, we start to really understand and then we're able to teach that to our children. Mm -hmm. And so this has been a really important part of our Advent tradition. And I really love this resource. And so we'll put it down in the description below. Yeah. The third tradition that we use to live out Advent is to decorate for Advent. Mm -hmm. And so I grew up and Christmas was a really big holiday in our house and we love to decorate for Christmas. And really now I have a ton of Christmas decorations, but what we do in Advent is we decorate first for Advent and then we use those Christmas decorations in the Christmas season. So we're super big into celebrating Christmas. Mm -hmm. And I think that's important to highlight right here is there is a Christmas season. Mm -hmm. It's not just one day. It is an octave that actually for eight days you are supposed to celebrate Christmas as if that is the full day. And the 12 days of Christmas is a very long tradition and we have a whole video on how to celebrate the 12 days of Christmas and daily devotional videos for you to check out that I'll link above. But the you can even celebrate Christmas all the way out until the 2nd of February on Candlemas. And so really allowing Advent to be Advent so we don't run out of steam and that we're able to embrace the fullness of the Christmas season. So when we decorate for Advent, again, our Christmas tree just has that purple ribbon. Our decorations around our house are purple. We add to it throughout the day and you'll hear a little bit of how we do that on feast days. Mm -hmm. But then there is on Christmas Eve is when we come together as a family and really transform the house. We hang our lights because... The lights represent the light of the world, who is Christ, who doesn't come into the world until Christmas. The, you know, we'll hang our ornaments and we'll go down memory lane. We'll use these things that we have inherited and start bringing those out with the children and really sharing them. Our mangers, yeah. we have one special family manger in which Jesus is left out of um, until actually Christmas Eve. All of the characters slowly Christmas make Day. Christmas Day. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Uh, all of the characters slowly make their way into the manger scene. And so it, the wise men are left far away until the epiphany. Uh, the shepherds come in again, slowly progressing in, Mary and Joseph. And so the scene becomes fuller as Advent progresses. We have a book on how to do that as well uh, that I'll put the link down below. And then we have a couple different manger sets. So we do let our kids free play yeah, with the this. other ones. It's the reality. Yeah. <laughs> Being real people. So our fourth tradition for celebrating Advent is to get a family Advent wreath. And so kids love Advent wreaths because kids love fire and it's awesome. And then I think for me, it's really cool to see when uh, at mass, the, the priest will light, you know, the first candle for the first Sunday, the second candle for the second Sunday. And then we, the kids get to come back that Sunday night mm -hmm. and then they get to light one more candle. And so again, it just draws them into the season of why we are celebrating Advent leading up to Christmas. It brings liturgy home. Mm -hmm. And so some of the ways that we have done this is to turn off all the lights and like the candles to really experience the season through all of our senses mm -hmm. that we are given bodies, that there is a reason that we can hear, that we can smell, that we can touch. And so to bring that all alive. And I think our liturgy does that well and to then bring that home. And with that can be music. Mm -hmm. And so that's actually number five is our Advent music. And we incorporate this with our Advent wreath. We've done it where we've added a verse of the O Emmanuel. Oh, come on, come on, Emmanuel. Emmanuel. <laughs> come on, come on, Emmanuel. Uh, every week. Mm -hmm. We've had special prayers as well that we'll say with those to kind of add and dive in. But with the music, again, celebrating Advent and then Christmas as this, a family. This one's so hard. It is so hard. <laughs> we try really, really hard not to listen to Christmas music until the start of Christmas season 
which is actually Christmas Day. Our radios in our car, again, have Christmas music. But our home, we like to incorporate. Hello has a great playlist on it with lots of Advent music. The O antiphons are great, which are the eight days before Christmas. Traditionally, there's one for each day that prepare you through music mm -hmm. for the coming of Christ. Yeah. The sixth Advent tradition is to clear out stuff. Mm. So... This is just a great time to, again, in that idea of making space for Christ, is to get rid of the clutter that's in your house. Get rid of the junk. And get rid of some things that are are good, that you can give away, that you can bless someone else by giving away uh, something that someone else can use. Yeah. And this is great for our hearts to mm. go through and empty a closet that's been just overfilling to go yeah. through our kitchen and go, what do we actually really need? And then for our kids to go, what is a toy that you can give to somebody who has no toys? Yeah. And especially since they're going to get new toys on Christmas, uh, and there is just something about clearing that space and preparing mm -hmm. that space um, for family to provide. And then with gifts, we do actually like to try to give activities just to avoid that build up and clutter that is so natural uh, to the human heart and materialism is something that we are working to fight against, especially in our kids, because there is a desire for stuff because sure. we have a desire that will only be filled in God. Yeah. So our seventh and final tradition is going to be to celebrate the feast days that are throughout Advent. So even though Advent is a penitential season, there are some awesome feast days that you should be celebrating with your family. And so mm -hmm. the first one is going to be on December 6th, which is actually the Feast of St. Nicholas. And so there are some great traditions and, and just a good way to be able to bring the kids into the tradition of the fact that Santa Claus is actually derived from St. Nicholas mm -hmm. and the stories behind those. You know, we have the, the children leave their shoes out uh, the night before and then we fill them with little coins, chocolate coins and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and there's stories behind those. And so there's just a, a great way, again, to bring them into the season. And we have pretty much a favorite book for every one of these feast days. And we've yeah. given them in the past on these feast days. And so we'll leave a link down below of what we like to read with the kids to yeah. teach them about these saints. I think also we really like to do peg dolls. Mm -hmm. I, Catholic Icing has great Maj Paj ones. I'll link it below Super and the kids easy. can do them really themselves. And again, we can use this as a catechetical time to teach about the faith, about these saints. And then they've just got little like stories. saint action figures yes. that they play with. <laughs> yes. Uh, she also has ornaments. I'll leave a link below that you can slowly again decorate that Christmas tree over time with purpose. Uh, the other element here is feast days are a great day to do maybe your Christmas cookie baking yeah. or to have a party with your friends. Uh, in Again, we're real humans. We have work parties. And yeah. so we don't say no to parties in you the You don't Advent have to season. be the Advent police. No. Uh, and so it is be joyful when you are there yeah. and then come back and make the rules for your family of what that looks like and how you live that out. Um, but on the feast day, so we talked about St. Nicholas on the 6th of December. On the 7th of December is St. Ambrose's feast day. He has a lot of traditions with honey and with bees. And so maybe a little bit of honey and then a candle activity. It is actually a uh, fasting day because the is the vigil for a solemnity, a major feast. Mm -hmm. Definitely a party day is the Immaculate Conception of Mary. And so we believe that she was conceived without sin because Jesus can't come into a place that is full of sin. And so that is a day to really celebrate her conception within the womb of Anne. And so on that solemnity, maybe you do all white foods. Major feast day, solemnity, celebrate it up. The next feast day is the 9th of December. These are all back to back. Uh, is St. Juan Diego. And so with that is on the 12th of December is Our Lady of Guadalupe. And so these are great days to have fabulous Mexican food mm. to really talk about Our Lady of Guadalupe. We've watched uh, some videos on Formed. We'll put some links down below again, a good book. I had to teach about these saints. Jacob definitely went to mass last year in a cape. That's right. A mantle of uh, 
<laughs> for St. Juan Diego. So he loved it. He loved this feast. A lot of churches will do a... a either there's some posada traditions there's some great like roses on the altar mm -hmm. so definitely looking in there can be just a lot of big celebrations around this time of year as well the next feast day is the 13th of december which is saint lucy and there are tons of traditions so the swedish culture has really taken her on as their saint uh, but there's a tradition where the oldest girl dresses in a white robe and wraps a red ribbon around her waist uh, and has a crown. It is traditionally uh, almost like an advent wreath. It has kind of that wreath and then candles in it. Uh, and there are some special uh, rolls that you can make that she will carry in on a tray. And there's, again, great books we'll put down below. Uh, Maybe go with battery candles depending on how Old yeah, my uh, my two year old <laughs> will burn down the house. The next piece is going to be Gaudete Sunday, which means rejoice in Latin. And this is the Sunday in which all of the vestments turn rose color or mm -hmm. pink, depending on. Definitely rose. <laughs> Definitely rose. I uh, but this is a different day. There's only two days in the liturgical calendar that are rose, and so it's one day in Lent and one day in Advent. And it's really this opportunity that amends our penance. We remember that we are a people already saved, mm -hmm. that we are a people that have already received Christ, that we are in our people that have already seen his resurrection. And so to really be excited for Christmas, but to also just rest in the joy of our faith that we have right now that has been given to us. And so it's a great day to just celebrate mm -hmm. the Next uh, is the Christmas Novena, and we'll start on the 16th of December. And now I think that things just start to quiet down a little bit. And these are really the days that we dive into prayer. Maybe we catch up on our Jesse tree. Maybe we catch up on singing a little bit. We dive into the O antiphons. Maybe it's a time in which there isn't TV. Maybe it's a time in which we have more stillness, more quiet to just, again, allow Christ to speak to us exactly where we are today. So that wraps up <laughs> our seven favorite traditions for living out the season of Advent. Yeah, again, leave a, a comment below. Let us know what your favorite traditions are. We love to hear from you guys. And we are praying for you all until next time. God bless.